Dan, I want to go back to the issues for him because you brought up a couple points there uh, before okay. we let you go. One of them was certainly about budgetary issues down the road, certainly yes. other items down the road. What were some of the things that came out? I, had, I popped my head in a few times just to see what was going on. Didn't realize I could have hung out there all morning. Um, <laughs> but did, did you... Uh, yeah. Did, we, could, what, we could have put you at a round table, Dave. You would have enjoyed that. I'm I sure. should have. And trust me, when I'm booking my f- trip for next year, I'll plan more accordingly. <laughs> but what was it that... Um, what was it that came out of there that the straw polls revealed and that you guys kind of sensed that the future of Division Three we're going to be looking at in the next year or two as part of legislation or changes coming that, that, that just are literally on the surface right now? Well, I don't think we're facing any imminent changes right now when it comes to budget or championships. Our current operating budget projections are uh, that we'll be solid for at least the next three years. We're not projecting any kind of championships deficit until 2019-20. But what we felt we needed to do, uh, we needed to take the opportunity to pose some policy options to our membership uh, in preparation for um, potential budget decisions that will need to be made down the line. Um, What we asked folks was, uh, really, when it comes to championships, um, the series of of, uh, budgetary uh, reductions that were made this past year um, have put us in good shape uh, regarding our championships budget. But those those reductions really ultimately represent some greater cross-sharing for those schools that do participate in championships. Um, That's one way to approach uh, any kind of championship budget shortfall. The other way to approach a championship budget shortfall is to begin to uh, restrict access. Uh, And especially in our team sports, the one to 6.5 access ratio has been in place now for several years. It actually is in our our manual, so we take a vote of the membership to change that. Um, But we wanted to get a sense from folks as to did they feel that um, greater cost sharing, uh, did they feel like the the current uh, reductions that have been implemented were unduly burdensome? Uh, The majority of the response in the survey was no, they weren't. Um, When we asked them, hey, if you're given the choice between additional cost sharing or access reduction, what would you prefer? And they said, yeah, we'd prefer additional cost sharing over um, uh, access uh, ratio reduction. Um, so both of those uh, both of those comments were consistent with the championship survey that we had conducted this past spring. We also asked them f- on the revenue side uh, if it's possible for us to um, identify and generate additional division specific revenue. Um, would you be interested in going in that direction and targeting that revenue toward championships? And and folks said yeah they would be. Um, when we asked them about the two options Options that we're that we've uh, identified right now conceptually, and that we don't have a lot of details on these. But one option would be to increase our membership dues, which haven't been increased since 1985. Uh, it's $900 per school and $450 per conference. Um, the other option was: um, Would you be interested in some kind of targeted championship surcharge that you would have to pay in order to be eligible for championships? Uh, folks clearly said, I think it was somewhere around 90%, give or take, that. You yeah, they'd be interested in a dues increase. Um, they would not be interested in some kind of championship-specific uh, surcharge. So that's very helpful information for us. Uh, and then finally, when we ask folks, hey, the current balance between championships and non-championships, you know, 75% allocation to our championships program and 25% to the non-championships program, um, allocating the $28 million budget that we have this year, for example. Um, folks, again, uh, consistent with prior surveys said, we think you have it about right. It's about, about as many people said, don't change it, as said, change it. To me, that, that, that tells me that's probably not an area that's ripe for any major change. Uh, we may look at tweaking that if necessary, but I think all of that information together is very helpful uh, for discussions that that will uh, begin to uh, to uh, take uh, to take part in. Starting with our championships committee, which meets uh, a couple of weeks from now here in Indianapolis, we'll ask them to review the feedback that we received in D.C. Maybe look at the uh, the, the cuts that were implemented this last year and, and see what kind of feedback we got on those cuts. Uh, do we want to look at any tweaks? Take the feedback 
share it with our strategic planning and finance committee, and then on to our president's council and management council. This is a budget planning year for us, Dave. Uh, this is the final year of our current budget cycle. So the timing regarding that discussion couldn't have been better for us because we could take that feedback and, and use it to plan our next operating budget. I definitely got a sense that dues coming to be doubled or tripled in the future is not something that schools were against, that they're totally for the idea. I think the big question then comes in, yeah, but we still want to get our, our side of that money. If Division Three is going to boost its own revenues on its own side, they don't want to only get 3.18% of those dues. I think that sounds like it's the biggest hurdle. Yeah, and I think it's fair to say that we wouldn't pursue a dues increase if we weren't able to keep the money. Uh, I think that's kind of a non-starter for, if you're not allowed to keep uh, to keep that, that additional uh, revenue. So um, assuming that we can do that, and I don't have any reason to believe at this point that that won't be something that we can work out, but we will have to go to the executive committee with that particular request um, because historically dues have been part of the association-wide uh, funding uh, revenue. So that's something that we'll need to do some additional work on if ultimately we decide to go in that direction. And then my final question, I asked this of Sharon Herzberger as well, outgoing president of the president or chair of the president's council, president at Whittier College. Uh, I asked her this per the dues and per the, the amount of attention and, re, and, and let's call it respect of the division three model and knowing that she goes up there and the D two guy talks about a surplus and he adds championships, uh, adds to the championships and D three goes up there and says, we're dealing with a deficit. Knowing that information, knowing that dues are something that, that D3 wants to make a move forward, is there enough political capital maybe to then go to the rest of the NCA and go, can we talk about the 3.18% about maybe increasing it for the division that is the majority of this NCAA? Do you think there's that political capital right now? She said she thought the conversation is going to be at least started now. Um, I I tend to think that the timing isn't right for that conversation, certainly in the short term. I think we need to see how the current restructuring in Division One plays out. Re remember now, we're, we're getting a, a, an allocation of revenue that's generated from Division One. Um, it was uh, an allocation that was guaranteed as part of the restructuring uh, agreements back in the mid-90s. Um, that's not revenue that we generate, but that's revenue that, that we're allocated. Um, I think there are unprecedented revenue challenges potentially that Division One is going to be looking at, uh, and I'm talking about the entirety of Division One, um, given the implementation of their new governance structure and their new federated model. Um, I would be surprised if folks are amenable to re-engaging in the allocation discussion until some of those issues have sorted themselves out. I, there's one other cautionary note that I would, I, I would just want to make, and that is if you open up the 3.18% guarantee for discussion, you also have to open up the association-wide program and service guarantee for discussion. And keep in mind, there are lots of association-wide programs and services that we benefit from in Division Three. that I think a lot of the Division One membership might say that they would be okay in doing away with because those programs and services are already provided uh, by the Division One conference offices. So when you're talking about scholarship programs, if you're talking about interpretation, um, there are a variety of, of services that we receive right now that are guaranteed as part of that agreement. If you open that agreement up for reconsideration, then you need to throw everything on the table. Right now, I, I personally believe the 3.18%, it's a really good deal for us. I think we can live within our means. We've, we've uh, developed a significant uh, reserve um, that still presents an opportunity for us to, to deal with uh, the financial challenges. So just because we engaged in the discussion with the membership at the convention doesn't mean we're, we're facing any kind of fiscal crisis. Uh, it was really more of us doing our due diligence and trying to fulfill our fiduciary responsibility. Well, of course, made a number of moves on the championship side to cut costs already with more moves potentially coming as well to cut costs down the road.